Hey everybody, my name's Dan. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about Git branches, more specifically on how to manipulate them, uh, rename them, delete them. I've already done a video sort of introducing you to the concept of Git branches, so in this video I'm going to try to uh, dive a little bit deeper, give you a better understanding of what they're for, and uh, how to manipulate them on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's go ahead and get started. Just a couple of the basics, uh, but before I get into that, I'll just show you that I'm in my Hello World repo. There's not a whole lot of stuff in here. Git status shows that we're on the master branch. Um, to list the branches that you have, all you got to do is type git branch with no arguments, and it will show you that I have two branches here, the master branch, and then another investigation branch that I used in a different video. If you want to create a new branch, um, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, I've shown you before the git checkout dash b and then new branch name. Of course, you don't want spaces in there. Um, that will create a new branch at your current location. Um, you can also do git branch, new branch name. Um, and I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that in a second. But before I do that, I just want to show you how to switch branches. And we've done this in previous videos and in didn't really take a lot of explaining because it's very straightforward really you just type git checkout and then the name of the branch you want to check out to so I can check out to this branch and if I do git branch now I have a little alias for it it shows you that I'm on that branch and I can do the same thing and do git checkout master to go back so you can switch back and forth between branches all day it makes development on different logical paths uh, very easy. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new branch here. Uh, so let's do git checkout dash b, we'll call it test branch. And it, it created a new branch at our current location and then checked out to it. And that that's key here. When you're first introduced to git, there can be some confusion about when I create a new branch, where does it start? And the answer is when you create it like this, it's starting wherever you are. So as an example, um, you know, where I am, you can see in the git log that the head commit is this DA6 commit. And so if I create a new branch, it starts here. And of course it has the history before that. But what I'm getting at is if you want to create a branch at an older state, the first thing you need to do is check out to that older state. So as an example, let's say we want to create a branch on 0DA. The first thing that we would do is git checkout to this commit, 0DA. And now we're in a detached head state. There, git status shows us head detached at 0DA. And all you got to do is git checkout dash B, give it a name, call it older branch and git branch shows that we're on older branch and git log will show that we are on 0DA7 so you know this is an example if you want to go back and then you need to do some development starting at an older point you can do it this way and this is the, the best way to do it for the most part so I want to talk a little bit about what is a branch and it may seem obvious um, to people that have come from, say, Subversion or other other source code management systems. And, and it's basically the same in Git, but there's there's a nuance in Git that you know branches in Git aren't really required. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of misleading. They are required from a development perspective, but from the internals of what Git is doing, a branch isn't required at all. For example, when I checked out directly to this commit, it warns you and it says you're in a detached head state. 
um, you can make experimental changes and commit them. It says you can commit. So you may say, well, why do I even need a branch? I can commit in a detached head. Um, and the, so I guess what I'm trying to say here is that Git, the branches in Git really exist more for the humans than for Git itself. So a development line, by definition in Git, is defined by the commits that came before it, right? So this commit, you can view it as a pure state of something, but you could also view it as this is the commit that's built on this commit, and this commit's built on this commit, and so these three commits, or all four of them here, represent a development line. And I'm not even on a branch, right? I mean, I'm checked out to a detached head. So from Git's internal perspective, it doesn't really need to know anything about branches. The branches exist for the human to be able to keep track of the development lines in a way that makes sense to them, to label them with a name, and to ultimately mark them as something that you want to keep uh, long term in your repo. And I'm going to sort of show you what that means uh, in later parts of this video. But I really just wanted to get, get it across to you that the concept of a branch in Git, you know, it's, it's a development line. It's, you know, a typical use case is, for example, branch we're on now so we're detached it so if we were going to get check out to older branch and then we may make a commit here right let's say I'm gonna open hello CPP at this older state and we'll just put a print down here okay so I can add this Git commit, added Dan print message. So what we've done here is we've literally we've gone back in the history and we have quote unquote forked at the location of uh, commit zero DA and we split off a new branch, right? And we create one commit there. And so the branches can exist simultaneously. You can have 10 branches that all exist here. They don't technically diverge until you create a commit on that branch, which we just did in this particular case. So I hope that's clear. Uh, it'll become more clear if you're new to Git as you, as you use it and you manipulate branches and you start to get a fundamental understanding of, of how these commits are tied to themselves to other commits and to branches. Um, so uh, one thing I want to show you too on the git branch command is how do you delete a branch and or how do you move or rename a branch. So as an example if I do git branch we'll see our list of branches and we're on the older branch we made a commit there let's say we want to rename test branch. We don't have to check out to that branch to rename it. You can, but all you got to do is type git branch dash m for move, um, and then you tell it the branch you want to rename, and then you give it the name of the branch that you want it to have. So let's say we wanted to rename test branch because we started doing some work, and we'll call it, you know, developing thing. You have a real description if you're doing real work. But if we hit enter and we do get branch again, you'll notice that it changed names. Okay, so I want to show you how to delete branches. So you'll notice that we're on the older branch where we have made one commit based on that older state. We have the developing thing branch because we just renamed it. And let's say you want to delete it. The way you do that is by git uh, branch dash D for delete, and then the name of the branch that you want to delete. And so if we try to delete this branch, we're going to get an error. And I want to point this out because this can be a little confusing at first to new people. It says error. The branch developing thing is not fully merged. Are you sure you want to delete it? And so you can force delete a branch with the capital dash D. 
But you might be wondering, well, what, well, what does this mean? It's not fully merged. I mean, the developing thing state is actually at the same state as master, right? And you can do that by, if you do git log on, and we'll just do the top commit, which is dash one, little shortcut. So that git log for that branch, developing thing branch, is at DA6. And if we do the same thing for the master branch, we'll notice it's also on DA6. So it says it's not fully merged. But what it's not telling you, and this is an implied thing, if you look at the man page, what it means is this branch is not merged with an upstream branch if it exists or head. And head, of course, is the head commit of your current branch, right? And so our current branch is older branch. And so this is why it's complaining. This is a little git nuance here. So if we git checkout to the master branch, then our head branch is identical to what the head of developing thing is. And now if we try to delete the branch, it has no problem with it. So I just want to point that out because that can be a little confusing at first. Now we could have always force deleted it with the dash capital D, but it's a good idea to use the lowercase d when you're deleting a branch because it w it's sort of a safer delete, right? This is just Git telling you, hey, you want me to delete uh, content in a branch that may or may not exist in another branch, meaning being fully merged. So a lot of times you'll do some development in a side branch where you're testing out a capability and then when you're ready you merge that into say your master branch or whatever development flow you use and at that point it's totally cool to go ahead and delete your topic branch because you've merged that content into your master so you won't lose it if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and try to delete the older branch. So if you've been following closely, you may remember that we went back in time for this branch and then we created a commit on it. And I know for a fact, since we just created that commit, that that commit is not merged in to master or this other branch. It's sort of dangling there on this older branch name. So what that means is if we go to delete it with this similar notation, we would expect it to complain again, wouldn't we? And it does. It says it's not fully merged. It's not in the master branch or an upstream. No upstream exists. So it's asking you, are you sure you want to delete it? And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Branch capital dash D older branch deleted older branch. It says was BCC, right? BCC F 200. So you might wonder if you knew to get, okay, you know, what happened there? It did it literally delete the work that I did in this commit? Well, one thing you might be tempted to do is run git log, give it the commit. And hey, that's interesting. The commit's still there. And that's because the commit is still in the repo. And this is what I was talking about before when, when I talk about branches being for humans and, um, and marking commits for, for being kept. That, the, the sort of the purpose of branches when you look at it from an objective perspective. So this commit still exists, but if I do a git log on my current branch, that commit's not there. And if I do a git log on this branch, that commit is not there. So where is it? You know, this is the, let's scroll back up here. This BCC commit, where the hell did it go? And so the answer is it's in the local repo and it's not associated with any branch. And what that means is that a long time from now, every once in a while, Git does a garbage collect mechanism and it will prune commits that aren't associated with a branch. So an interesting side effect of this whole mechanism is that if you accidentally delete a branch with this command, you can get it back because as long as, you know, the garbage collect hasn't happened, 
which is pretty infrequent, you can find that commit and check out a branch to it, right? So you may be wondering, like in this case, I have the commit. Crap, where is it? Let me go back up here. So the commit's still in my terminal. We know what it's called, BCC 200. And you may be asking yourself, well, what happens if I don't know the commit hash? I mean, you could have deleted the branch days ago, lost the terminal, you don't remember what it's called. And the way that you can retrieve it is to look at your git ref log. And this is the last thing I want to show in this video. And this is sort of like a history of what you've done in your repo over time. So you can see, oh, we did a checkout, we did a checkout, we did a commit here, we did another checkout, we did a reset back here. Um, so you can think of this as sort of like your history command for bash. But what's cool about it is it shows you the commit associated with the action. So check it out. Here's our BCC commit. It's in the ref log. So what you can do is if you think you lost a branch or a commit because it wasn't on a branch, you can check your ref log, see if it's still there, and then git check out to that state. And then, you know, once you're there, if we do git log, we'll see that now on the BCC commit. And now we can just do git checkout dash b. We'll call it what we called it before. And now if I do git branch, we'll see that it's back. So that's a pretty useful way to recover a branch that you may have accidentally committed or didn't want to commit. So I think that's all I want to show for this video. Um, just as a reminder to create a new branch, you, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do git checkout dash b, new branch name. Uh, you can also do git branch, new branch name, and this will create branch. It'll create a branch at your current head. Both of these commands will. If you want to move or rename a branch, git branch dash m. Um, current branch name, destination, branch name. And if you want to delete a branch safely, give it the lowercase dash d, branch name. And if you want to delete, force delete a branch, you can use the capital D. And finally, if you think you lost commits, lost the branch state, and you want to retrieve it, check the git ref log. All right. Thanks for watching. My name is Dan. I'll see you next time.